what exactly Operation Twist means for the bond market. We bring in Guy Labas. He is one of the top forecasters in the industry, a Bloomberg best. He is chief fixed income strategist at Janney Montgomery Scott. He is joining us from Philadelphia this morning. Guy, thanks for being on the inside track. What do you think is going on in the bond market? We've talked about this. We talked about the expectations quite a bit. But you say it's becoming less sensitive now to news flow? A little bit, particularly when it comes to economic data. Now, if we kind of harken back to, say, May, which is really when the current round of economic downturn risk began to emerge, seriously, we saw a response in the bond market and the stock market to every little piece of economic data. And frankly, that slowed down. We're now more sensitive to policies, such as the Fed policy, such as the administration's job policy announced a couple of weeks ago. So, Gay, so I mean, where, where's the most opportunity then now? Well, we actually like opportunity outside of the Treasury markets, and we're not the only ones saying this, but at the same time, we continue to see credit spreads and corporate bonds widen, despite the fact that fundamentals are much stronger than they were several years ago, you know, as Mr. Immelt mentioned a couple of minutes ago. Uh, Guy, I want to talk about those corporate bond spreads a little bit more. We put together a chart of some investment-grade corporate bond spreads to show everybody just how rapidly they've backed up in the last few weeks, going back to sort of the July time frame. Is this... You know, if, if you see this as attractive, I'm, I'm, I'm taking from that that uh, there's, a, there's an element of irrationality uh, in, in the speed at which these spreads have backed up from your standpoint. Well, the spreads have certainly backed up very aggressively, but I think if, if you were able to strip out the financial sector, you know, the Bank America names, the other big national banks from that group, you'll see that spreads have widened at a much, much slower pace. And frankly, industrials that have improved their balance sheet over the past couple of years, that have decent income prospects going forward, that have strong liquidity, there's no fundamental reason why spreads have widened. It is more of a market technical thing for those non-financial names, at least. So basically, munis and high yield are your best picks. Yes, absolutely. And the muni market, one of the reasons we like it is it tends to be a little bit slow to adjust. Long-term interest rates have fallen very rapidly in the last few weeks. Munis have lagged somewhat, and that gives them a little bit of additional relative value there. Guy, do you mind if we go back to the Treasury market for just a second? I know you're not in love with it, but everybody wants to know uh, just how strong bonds can perform. You're right, maybe the bond market isn't quite so reactive to economic data. It certainly is reactive to policy. In the wake of Operation Twist, in your opinion, did the 10-year yield put in a bottom at 167 and the 30-year 274? Will we see them hit those levels again? Well, one thing we've been saying over the past couple of years is that there's nothing more dangerous than a commonly held perception. And 12 months ago, the commonly held perception was the idea that for some reason rates couldn't go any lower. Well, that's obviously not the case. Rates can go lower. We don't see a reason in the markets right now why they would. However, it is theoretically possible if, for example, economic conditions deteriorate further and or deflation begins to emerge. We're not seeing it now, but it is possible where economic conditions to worsen. But would it take, say, QE3, for example, for the 30-year to test the crisis low of 2.5% thereabouts? Well, I think we could actually see the 30-year test 2.5%, although not remain there for a long time, just as a result of Fed buying. Supply and demand is very, very tightly aligned on the long end of the yield curve. We have huge demand from insurance companies, pension funds that need these long-term assets. Then when you add the Fed buys on top of that, that really skews the supply and demand situation on the long end of the yield curve. So we could see long-term 30-year yields fall to the mid to high 2% range. So, Key, that's a potentiality, obviously, from the Fed. But out of curiosity, what if the ECB does go forward with this covered, the bond-covered program? What if it goes forward, enlarges the ESFS? Could that have any effect on the U.S. bond market? Yeah, I mean, Treasuries, in large part, are a risk game right now. If we see improvements in Europe, Treasury yields begin to rise, Treasury prices fall, we see greater demand for corporate bonds. So there's a heavy sensitivity to these outlying risk factors, including those in Europe. It all hinges, really, however, on whether the market believes an expansion of the ESFS or an expansion of ECB policy will be enough to stop Europe's problems. And frankly, we don't believe the markets will think that those expansions will be enough to solve the problems. Really what we need to see is countries like Greece cut their debt load, and the easiest way to cut your debt load is to default, ideally, in an organized manner. Right. Guy, is there one place where we're not focused on? We talked about corporates, we talked about high yield, we talked about munis. Is the search for yield taking investors anywhere else right now? 
Well, I think what we have seen is a number of bond investors have actually shifted to the dividend-paying stock side of the equation. And with the decline in equity markets over the course of the last several months or so, some of the yields on sort of blue-chip dividend-paying stocks have become comparable to bonds issued or better than bonds issued by the same companies. So we've seen a little bit of a migration actually out of the high-quality fixed-income area, particularly corporates, into the high-quality dividend-paying stocks area. And that is one opportunity for income, certainly. Guy, always good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Guy Lebas, he's the chief fixed-income strategist at Jenny Montgomery Scott.